So Asus released their own great value version of the OLED G9 and after swearing they'd send a review sample for months, I've decided it's time we take a look at this thing to see if it's even worth considering or if it needs to be thrown in the trash. And by the way, I will be purchasing the 240Hz non-smart version OLED G9 by popular request for a full review soon, which is made possible thanks to all the wonderful Patreons. Link in the description if you want to support my work, I highly appreciate it. But anywho, yes, the Asus PG4 49 WCD is finally available for purchase and comparing it to the non-smart version of the OLED G9 called the G93SC, well, they have the same glossy 49 inch 32 by 9 5120 by 1440 quantum dot OLED V2 panel with the same infinite contrast ratio, which means that the colors on this thing are going to be absolutely incredible because not only does quantum dot OLED give you a really great color volume, but thanks to that glossy finish, it really pops off the screen as well. And when it comes to HDR, honestly, quantum dot OLED, thanks to it not having the color volume issues at high brightness that W OLED has, it's actually a really great HDR display technology as well. So for HDR PC gaming, it's gonna be super fast, really vibrant, and overall, it can get pretty bright as well, considering that they should both hit up to 1000 nits of peak brightness. So it's sounding really good, but where they're different, they are very different. For starters, the refresh rate is wildly different. The Asus version has a measly 144 hertz. Yucky, because the G93SC has 240 hertz, meaning that yes, it has six 67% higher frames than the Asus version. And of course, 144 hertz is still a lot, but that's a big difference. So the Asus monitor better have a lot going for it, or it simply won't make any sense to purchase whatsoever. And does it? Well, kinda. So it does have a custom heat sink, which should in theory, have less issues when it comes to burn-in and potentially they could maybe push the brightness higher, but it looks like it's probably not gonna be too much different. And the other differences would be, well, the stand is quite a bit larger on the Asus model, which could make it a little bit more stable, but honestly, this is gonna be a huge pain for people unless you have a very large desk, so that kind of sucks. And then the ports, well, they're mostly the same, but to be fair to Asus, it looks like they're gonna have regular sized ports, whereas the Samsung version is going to have a micro HDMI 2.1. So that could be a problem for some people. It's honestly kind of annoying. So that is nice to see on the Asus version. And they do have some other improvements, such as they do have a uniform brightness option and some gaming features, stuff like that. But to be honest with you, I don't think OLED is really bright enough full screen to make the uniform brightness setting make a whole lot of sense. Although it might be helpful for some photo and video editing if you're interested in that and the gaming features quite frankly i just don't care about on any of these monitors so overall the biggest difference between these two monitors is the heat sink and the refresh rate at the price that this is at i think we really have to ask the question is it really worth buying this asus monitor because the asus monitor is coming in at 12.99 which to be honest with you if this was the launch of the oled g9 i'd say that's a good price but the oled g9 at least the non-smart feature version can be regularly had for a 11.99 now making it a hundred dollars cheaper and i think i've even seen it for like 1100 or even a thousand dollars during black friday although of course that's not necessarily fair so you know you're spending a hundred dollars more on this asus monitor to effectively be getting worse specs it's the same monitor at a lower refresh rate and yeah you do get a quote-unquote custom heat sink but how much that's going to help only time will tell and is it worth it to spend more to get less overall obviously the answer is no but to be fair to asus well the samsung quality control is absolutely horrendous in my experience i've gotten so many panels from them that were either damaged in shipping or had issues after i got them that i think it actually is worth considering like hey here's a monitor you can buy from somebody else who isn't samsung because my god i've had my fair share of issues with them but in this case, OLED is incredibly hard to damage and I did not have any major issues with their OLED G9. So I actually don't know how much that matters in this specific case. So overall, I just simply cannot recommend spending $100 more to get a heatsink that may or may not actually improve the experience and get a far, far lower refresh rate. It makes absolutely no sense. And quite frankly, this monitor just doesn't really have a place in the market right now at its current price. It has to at least be the same price as the G93S see and honestly it should probably be lower so this needs to be $1,200 or maybe even $1,100 I 
choice. Otherwise, it makes no sense whatsoever. And I just can't recommend this to people unless you must have the heatsink or the regular HDMI 2.1. Whether you're looking to connect a new console, gaming PC, or just need a fast and reliable HDMI cable to connect over long distances, Rupro has you covered with their certified 8K HDMI 2.1 fiber optic cable available in sizes of up to 50 feet and can deliver a perfect full 48 gigabits per second connection over distances other cables could only dream of reaching. And with 48 gigabits per second of bandwidth, it can easily drive 8K 60 FPS or 4K 144 FPS 10-bit HDR video through its ultra-thin, flexible, and durable housing, and it even supports ER. So if you're in the market for a cable that can drive a beautiful new TV or monitor, be sure to check out RuPro on Amazon today.